and gentlemen, we have with us none other than architect Akshat Bhatt, architecture discipline, New Delhi. Please put your hands together to welcome on stage architect Akshat Bhatt. Hi. Um, I run a small studio. It's called Architecture Discipline uh, out of Delhi. And um, we've been making buildings like this for the last, uh, for a little over a decade now. Uh, this was one of our first projects. It was um, a town hall for Bhatia City. It was run off some solar panels. It was to announce a 125 acre development. And at the same time, we also did one project in the vicinity of the old Ranakpur Temple, um, which used materials that were basically gathered off and around the site. Um, through our early projects, we realized that we were making grandiose plans for cities and islands of excellence in terms of buildings themselves. But our cities continued to look like this. So the moment you step out of a controlled development, uh, depending on what, how you extend your domain, you, you, you find yourself often in India into urban sprawl like such. Um, that allowed us to, or that actually prompted us to start looking a little deeper into what uh, we were doing. And we, you know, through a few years of practice, we started exploring whether we can actually go beyond just being a service to um, a client's brief. Um, and we found that there was opportunity for us to actually start looking at what had already been created. So to extend the domain of recyclability, reuse and replenishment beyond just individual building components, we actually now had cities and parts of cities available to us to actually regenerate, to take and convert into something else. So it was kind of also prompted by you know, all the conversation about the new development smart city programs to say, can we actually just start looking at what we have as, as what we generally call urban sprawl and do something about it. Um, through this, we found, well, we stumbled upon, partly stumbled upon and partly actually doctored a project in the old city of Jodhpur, um, which was privately funded um, and partially self-funded to regenerate um, the blue city. So we said, can we now start looking at the blue city beyond the cliches of just blue city? Can we actually do something here that starts regenerating itself as an urban form? Can it become, uh, can we sort of induce some sort of a commercial framework in here so that it becomes a little, uh, so that the project's not actually just driven by the founders of the project, but self-sustaining. We identified, uh, we took um, the walk from the old grain market of Jodhpur to the Mirandar Fort, identified certain nodes which we thought were critical, um, not just for their beauty, but also for their strategic presence. And after a series of studies, actually mapped out a walk. So this was a pedestrian walk um, that would then uh, we used to actually identify some pathological elements um, that would then charge, recharge or supercharge this development. So we wouldn't actually have to go and fund an entire urban, urban uh, regeneration project. We would do a partial regeneration project using some landmarks that would then sort of have a sort of viral or a catalytic effect. Just some mapping exercises and how we identified some of, our, some of the key nodes. So the idea was to actually go behind, beyond the Umed Bhavan because we know that there's enough large private enterprise actually doing this. We found a old step well, um, which is called the Turji Ka Jhalda, which was actually a dumping ground. So that's what it was before. It was, it was nothing, it was just toxic water, toxic sludge. And it sat right next to the RAF project. It formed, it was actually pretty much the front courtyard out of the foreground for the RAF project. Um, so the first step was, we felt it was like a key node being a water body, being where it was, being like an open public space. Uh, so we first decided to clean it out. It took us about, it took us, and I think a, a case here is how quickly this could actually happen. It took us two months, 17, uh, well, 250 trolleys and 17 lakh rupees to clear out this mess. Took us another three lakhs to sandblast, you know, the the step well and the monument around it and bring it back to this condition. 
so much so that it then eventually became like a self-sustaining, vibrant, clear water ecosystem on its own and became a fairly democratic space. So, you know, now this place over here, as you can imagine, was known for petty crime um, and drug abuse. And suddenly all of this cleaned out, became like a nice clean space for democracy where tourists and locals would gather themselves and sort of, um, it became, well, a, a, a place that was active from, say, five in the morning till about one in the, well, one in the morning, and people are sort of using it. It became one of the most tweeted, it was, that's actually what social media did, it became one of the most talked about and tweeted uh, places in Jodhpur suddenly. At the same time, we identified another place, as you see right at the back there, um, you know, a, a building that was done in the 80s at a sort of vintage point, we decided to treat it like a, um, sorry, we to go to the square. We also decided to clean up the square as you would, so take the, take the wired services down, create some place for various communities. Uh, over here is a little uh, space for praying for the Muslim community, whereas the rest of the place was pretty much a Hindu community. So we decided to clear out uh, well, the court, do some street uh, furniture, do some signage, um, a little bit of plantation and some conservation work to the, to the step well. Again, self-funded, um, less than 10 lakh rupees uh, with some commissioned cartographs and a couple of water fountains that are now used for people to celebrate Holi. And we cleared up the street. So we took all the wire transformers down, all the overhead services out. Again, minimal investment, but fairly uh, significant impact. Um, to then start creating what is now called, I think the slide shows a little bit jumping out, what we also called the Stepwell Cafe, which basically became an information center that sat at the end of the of the step well to tell people about the Jodhpur project and the history of this particular area of Jodhpur. Um, so it became a rooftop cafe, fairly inexpensive. You can actually get a coffee here for 30 rupees. You can get a beer, beer here at retail price. But the idea is that it's a little cafe where you can hang around and you can learn about the history of Jodhpur and the, and the progressive intentions of the Jodhpur project. Again, we found, you know, the, the gold signage, hand-painted, and the uh, artwork from the inside and the overall styling of the Steppel Cafe became, made it like a much talked about uh, space. And that along with uh, Steppel became a tourist attraction. So it became a new tourist attraction in the city of Jodhpur. Now these are all, most of these pictures are not actually professionally taken. They're actually pictures that we've taken off Instagram. So you see how much we've actually got as content. This is the beginning of it. We identified a few other nodes, uh, such as this. Uh, this was the house before. It was a little Haveli as a precursor. Uh, planned a few interventions in here. And then approached a few Indian brands. So we approached Good Earth and Nicobar and approached a few other designers to sort of add a little bit of uh, heterogeneity to the overall architectural expression. So this Haveli, which was this, was finally stripped out and it became, became a retail space for Good Earth and Nicobar and a couple of other local brands like a guy making rugs and such. The idea was to take what are like known established large Indian brands such as, uh, well, just to name a few, Good Earth and Forest Essentials, uh, Nicobar, um, Royal Enfield and then use those to piggyback local brands such as Andrab and what's not like a rug maker, a small little bakery to, um, to make the project sort of economically sustainable in itself. And just a couple of views of the transformation. Um, Rushar did the Good Earth store, used some local arts and crafts to actually, to decorate the space. Well, the next one was another node uh, which became the Forest Central store. It's this, so there are the, the first three uh, Intervention was actually three separate Haveli. So this became, through a series of design exercises and some interventions and some conversation with the client, became this. So it became the forest central store, a kind of jewel box as you enter the space. Uh, 
like a hat tip to the Art Deco past of, of Jodhpur. And uh, again, became a place, each one of these stores became a place to tell the story of the JDH project, not just be like a brand present space. So there is a working model of a step well to demonstrate how water regeneration happens through step wells, how old construction techniques can still be used in a modern context or a contemporary context. Um, and they still have a larger lifespan. Again, became something that's much tweeted and much written about. So we were sort of piggybacking on media. We were piggybacking on social media to actually propagate the project. So you don't have to push it out as a series of dossiers or a series of uh, paid articles in newspapers or such to, you know, sort of to, to lend impetus to the place. And then we took a third one, which became a pure retail space. So this is where all um, the brands that were sort of housed were, uh, uh, were local and uh, had some connection with the, with the Jodhpur city per se and became a sort of holding for the project. So that's a continuously changing holding for, um, for the JDH project sort of telling us what's coming next, what are the events that are happening, uh, what are the events that are going to happen in the, in the, in the coming future, just like sort of a place for announcement. And last but not least, we went back up to the grain market and started restoring, you know, like an old icon, which is the clock tower, um, and started creating like little localized shelters for, uh, for the street workers. A uh, couple of rooftop bars, um, and then started pushing their, you know, a series of events. So this was an event that used to happen all, in Jodhpur already, but it wasn't really popular in mainstream. We also piggybacked that with a rooftop cinema. And um, so basically now Jodhpur becomes, rather than a one night destination or a one day destination for tourism, just to see the Mehranta Fort, it actually now starts becoming a small city that people can spend three, four or five days in um, with electric vehicles customized for the space, which are absolutely silent, so there's no noise on the street again. So the, city's become, the, the space becomes a little quiet where there is like activity throughout uh, as like a core in the step well. And there's enough happening to create like a great positive atmosphere within the space. Um, yeah, and that's where I end this. It's, um, for us, it was a learning in how we can actually, uh, we can actually self-fund and, um, you know, most successful practices can actually do that with very little impetus. We realize how little effort it actually takes to do something positive. If you're willing to put a few things in yourself, you don't really have to rely on convincing government officials, you don't really have to rely on convincing large families or large, you know, boards and, and patrons to actually fund the project. So the project in the first two phases, which is what I've shown you so far, cost us only 35 lakh rupees. And that more than is more than recovered in just uh, the real estate rental that's sort of pumped in by the brands that are there. That's it. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we still have five more minutes left. We're gonna open the floor for questions. Let's get some questions from the audience as well. And please do raise your hands. We'll have the mics passed on to you. Any questions? Yes, sir. Actually, firstly, let me congratulate you. You've done a fantastic job over there. I've seen it physically from the time that it used to be what it was and to what it is now. Uh, only uh, a very stupid uh, uh, interpretation of the whole thing could be that could you do away with the water because there's a lot of runoff of regular dirty water that goes here and there's no means of cleaning it. I know a step well is supposed to have water inside, but then it is also uh, a public nuisance, you know, with all these, uh, while it looks very frolicky for people to jump in and everything, but it is open to incidents. So was there any other surface treatment that you could have done uh, for the, the bottom where the water is? Could there have been a public garden or something like that? I mean, of course, you would cringe at the thought of having a step well with no water at the bottom. Um, the step well is actually self, regen it regenerates itself. So it's actually being fed off uh, aquifers from underground. And there is an ecosystem there, the Gulab Sagar Lake, which is now being restored. Uh, and there are three other lakes that sort of work together. Um, the local community now uses these for fresh water. The water is clean, but yes, there are surface drains, the sewage and sanitation systems that needed work. That's now under, uh, that's now being implemented. So 
So now, after we've got permission from the government, we're actually now digging out the sewage systems, taking those surface drains out so that all uh, the sludge and all the waste that's being generated by the community is, being, is going somewhere else. There is now a new construction ban because we've been able to demonstrate how you can redensify existing structures uh, to house enough, uh, enough modern program. Um, we had found that this, the, the sludge mixing with the fresh water of the, uh, the step well only happens during the monsoon when there was surface flooding on the streets. And that's why we, uh, we sort of pushed for this, for a new sewage treatment system per se. And we could then sort of implement, we could start implementing that along with all the electromechanical services that have to happen to sort of cater to the city and whatever little raised demand there is. It's, sorry, when were you there last? I was there this April. It's not there as of now. Mm -hmm. So that's the concern. Yes, I think it's the project, the second, the next phase of the project was to start in August, September to start implementing that bit. And yes, when you start going into public infrastructure space, you know, so this was not really public, it was sort of, you know, like an isolated thing. It's like you've taken a park and you, uh, and you sort of decided to look after it. The moment you go onto a street, you know that you're actually disrupting traffic flow for a while and just inconveniencing some people for interim periods. So you have to actually get a series of permissions to do that or get a buy-in from the community. Um, I think next time you go, that'll be done. Well, let's take the next question. Hi, my name is Nishan. Really enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to go there and experience the space. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, any uh, touristic space over some time, uh, because of commercial factors, there are a lot of other things like, you know, because money is coming in, people start use, making use of that space. I mean, you, I saw you, uh, you know, selecting places and uplifting it at the same time. There can be a neighbor who thinks it commercially and, you know, comes up with his own, uh, which happens in a touristic space. Have you thought of uh, such scenarios or any? Look, it was any old city is already fairly tourist uh, driven. So there were already, uh, there were already rooftop, small rooftop bars and small rooftop setups there. There was already some restaurants and coffee shops, um, but they were, they were not just low level tourism, I, I low, you know, minimal price, low infrastructure, unsafe, unsanitary. They were also, uh, they were also dense for uh, undesirable activity. What we've done is we've demonstrated how little it takes to do something well. You know, it takes more intent than money. It takes more clarity than time. And what's, uh, what's happened is that yes, a few more places have come up or a few guys have actually decided to clean up their act and make uh, what was a sort of uh, a dark cubby hole a more positive space. So they've actually taken the same approach. They've cleaned up, they've removed, they've reduced. And what it's, what it's done is they've actually been, become a catalyst for cleaning up, for, pe for, for encouraging people to clean up, right? Um, People also realize that generally positivity in a space. So if you've got this one, uh, what, what used to be a dumping ground is now like an aquifer where you're jumping into the water or you're running or, you're, or people are lighting candles and running chants of Siva through the night. It becomes a place for meditation and solace and whatever and, and just an overall coming together of not just the local community but also foreign tourists and local tourists. Um, so I think the overall impact has been, uh, has been positive. And it's been positive, not because we've gone and spent tons and tons of money. I think we, that we were very conscious of the program that has to go in and the amount of money that has to be fed in is what, is, is what uh, made this change, right? Uh, what I didn't show you was that it's actually now encouraged people like the, the Silver Spitfire flew into Jodhpur last week. So now they've got an, an, a flying club there as well. So the programming, because there are a diverse set of tourists coming here and now people are spending a little more time, the programming of the city has become a little more interesting. So you can actually stay here now and learn polo. 
you can spend four days here and actually go to the flying club and get a joyride for very little money. Um, at the same time, you know, what has happened is so the local baker or the guy who is making the, you know, the local tea mix or the, or, or the lassi gets a space that is, that has been partially funded by the revenue that's being generated by the larger brands. So they can actually give him a neat clean space and they fund his, uh, his packaging and his presentation and, uh, and such. So it just overall uplifts the place.